Okay, so in this video, we're going to continue on with chart.js, the JavaScript library that I introduced in the last video. We went ahead and made a bar graph using McDonald's calorie counts and different burgers. And uh, we started up with a brand new chart from scratch. And if you missed that video, I recommend watching it because we're going to use some of that code and turn this chart into a line chart. Now we're going to get new data because the calorie count doesn't really make sense with a line chart. And we're going to talk about some things you can do with the line chart. And yeah, that's pretty much all that's going to happen in this video. The data set I'm using for this particular chart is Tesla, their revenue by quarter. So you can get this info on Yahoo Finance. I actually just Googled Tesla financials, and this was one of the links. So if you want to do it that way, you can. But I switch the view from annual to quarterly, and then we're going to take these five quarters and we're going to take the revenue of each and make a line chart to show how the revenue progressed over time. And that's why our data set didn't really make sense with the calorie count because with a line chart it's to view something happening over time and calories you know per burger isn't something that happens over time it's just that. So what I'm going to do I'm going to go back to our code here and if you remember here are our labels so I'm actually just going to wipe all of these out and then here below is an array of our data. So I'm also going to wipe all of this out. And then something else I'm going to do, I'm going to take out this background color and then remove this comma. And I'm also going to change in the configuration of this chart, the type for my bar chart to a line chart. And I'm going to keep the options for now. We don't want to display the legend still. I don't think it's useful. And then we're also going to give it a title. However, for this chart, I want the title to be Tesla. There, I can't do the apostrophe S still. Tesla's revenue over time, or maybe by quarter. Still can type. Um, that didn't change since last video. Don't worry. And then I'm going to save it. And also, I'm just going to open this up in Chrome just so I have it. And as we change the code, I can refresh and make sure it looks OK. So here it is open up. You can see we have the new title, Tesla's revenue over time, and then no data, no labels, nothing, because we took all of those out, which we're going to put fresh data in. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this over to my other monitor so I can put in the labels and the data and also have that data in my other monitor. So this right here is going to be quarter three of 2020. This one's going to be 20, uh, quarter four of 2020. This is quarter one of 2021, quarter two and quarter three, just so you're aware if you're following along. Um, if you're looking at this in the future, you're probably going to see different dates because it's going to be more recent. So the labels, I'm going to start out with Q3 of 2020. And then Q4 of 2020. Q5, or no, not Q5, Q1 of 2021. Q2 of 2021. And then lastly, we have Q3 2021, Q meaning the quarter. So we have those five quarters, we have the labels, and now we just need the dollar amount. And something else to take in mind when you're looking at this, this is in thousands, so this is actually $13 billion, which I find that really high, but my math should be right. That's If you add three more zeros, it should be billion, because it says all numbers in thousands up here. So we're just going to keep it the same. And I'm going to copy the first one. And that's this value. And actually, I need to take away the commas or it'll get confused. And the next quarter after that is this amount. Take away the commas. OK, so I have the five revenue data now. Let me go ahead and save it. And then we'll refresh this chart. And now we have a good looking line chart with the same tool tips. If I hover over each dot, it will give me the exact data amount for that particular dot. But I do not like the color whatsoever. So let's go ahead and change that. And I'm going to Google RGB color picker again and steal this blue right here. And so in the data set, we're going to add another property and say border color. And color has a capital C and it's going to be this RGB value, just like that. So we'll save that, now we'll refresh, and I now have a blue line. 
Now, something I like about line charts just visually, I like when the bottom is filled out and it's colored in. So let's go ahead and add that option too. And to do that, there's another property we say fill, and that is going to be true. Save that, we'll refresh, and now we have a fill effect down below. But we can actually give this a color too. So let me find a like lighter blue, maybe this one right here. Let me copy its value. And then we can say background color with a capital C. Its value is going to be RGB this. And now this looks exactly how I like it. It's all filled in, but it has a lighter color so we can still see the line pretty well. And then lastly, these edges look a little too straight for me. So what we can do is we can give them a little bit of curve as they flow. So there's another property called tension. And this, you'll want to give it a single decimal point value. So the best I've seen is 0.1. And that'll make it look like this. See, it gives it a little bit of curve, but not too much that it makes the data look a little wonky. But if you go higher and you put 0.5, you can see that this gives it too much curve and it starts curving up like right here. And then it curves a little bit down at a different angle right there. Same with this, see how it goes up and then down. It makes the data not quite accurate anymore with that amount of tension. So that I, I think 0.1 is like a good middle ground, just like that. Okay, and then one last thing I wanna show you, I'm going to add a hover border color. And that value, I'm just gonna give it the color red. I'm not gonna put an RGB, I'm just going to spell out red. And it actually knows what that is. And so I'll come over and I'll refresh and now if we hover over a point, that point will have a red outline around it. I kind of like that. It helps us see exactly which point we're hovering over. All right, and that's pretty much it. That's all I really wanted to show with the line chart. Um, I think next we'll do a pie chart, and I hope to see you in that video. Take care.